edition of Insight here on Zodiac and I'm your usual host Teresa Timwekandanga. Today we're going to talk about a range of sporting issues. I have with me the Minister of Sports Grace Chumia and you talk about to us about football mainly but of course we'll talk also about other minor sporting disciplines. But we are here at the Bingo National Stadium. When are we eventually going to sit in here and watch soccer? Thank you, Teresa. Uh, indeed, this is a magnificent stadium we have in this country, and it's like we're in paradise. Right. And according to brief this, we are in Malawi. I can assure you that uh, the contractors finished the work, and uh, we have got the plans that uh, July, August, we should not pass this month, this stadium needs to be opened. Mm -hmm. What I can, there are just a few areas where we need to finish. Uh, I'm sure after getting the funds from the treasury, we'll be, uh, we'll be through about everything here. So, so it's, okay. it's just about uh, the funds. Um, when, and when we're talking about the funds, what for exactly? We just need like 500 million. To finish, there is an issue of uh, the main cable, electric cable, mm -hmm. it's not installed yet. You know, we have got electricity and the rights, but you see that the, the rights we have here cannot write the whole stadium at once. So we also need the sewer system, mm -hmm. uh, so that the, all the, the, the toilets, they need to start functioning. Also the issue of uh, the main cable for the telecommunication, you know, issue of media, all those communications should be improved. So there are three areas here where we're waiting to finish, but as soon as we have been provided with the funds to raise our, the stadium will be on. But uh, government has been talking about the 500 million kwacha for quite some time now. Uh, where is the problem? Is it government doesn't have the money? You're sourcing it from somewhere? What's the big deal about it? You know the country we have been passing through so many economic challenges and one of which is financial problems. And uh, if you can take you back, you remember the issue of cash gate. These are the effects now of cash gate which we are facing now. But I would like to say that as the government, we we, they thought it of prioritizing. You know, we had a shortage of food in the country and uh, drugs. So they thought it first to prioritize this uh, food is very important. Somebody without energy, if he has not eaten, he cannot pray the match. And somebody, if he's sick, he needs to be treated. So we thought it they should prioritize that. But at, at the moment, we have also heads with the Minister of Finance and my officials with the, uh, the officials from the Minister of Finance. They had a meeting which they have assured that maybe by this month or next month they'll be ready to give us 300 million mm -hmm. to start with. Okay. Believe me, with the 300 million, we'll be able to do something. Right. But otherwise, immediately after we finished, this stadium will be open. So this magnificent uh, place we're in right now, how much again does, did it cost us? Um, it is billions. Yeah. This is billions of kwachas. It's not a joke. Right. And I would like really to thank uh, the government of China for uh, coming out to assist us with uh, this uh, loan. Uh, and first of all, let me also thank His Excellency, the late Professor Bingo Amtaliga. This was his vision. And that's why we thought it's very important to honor him by giving this the name the Bingo Nation. And, and uh, now that you are at that point, there was a debate about naming the stadium after Bingo, uh, especially because, well, um, we got the loan during his time, but he had planned to have this stadium um, in the southern region. It was Joyce Banda who brought it back in Dilongwe. And, and why, why is the DPP government insisting on having it named after Bingo? We say Bingo is the one who initiated the project. He had the vision. He tried his way to find the source of funds through China, and he brought here. Mm -hmm. Teresa Ndanga, it's very easy for someone to name, just to transfer a thing to take it to Brant and bring it here. I mean, he can just say that we want to transfer to come if he doesn't have resources. <laughs> what else can you gain from there? So the issue people are fighting because Joyce Banda said we should build in Lilongwe. I don't think the logic, I don't see the logic at but, all. But, but she, the she, does deserve, she does deserve some praise, right, for having it here in Lilongwe, which is starved of stadiums, so to say. Wow, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we are all, the issue is we should know that we are all Marawians. Wherever the stadium would have been, that's, that's not a big issue. But the issue is for someone to have the vision to bring it here. Someone is thinking all the night, where can I get funds to, br to bring this such magnificent stadium? That's the main, the main root cause. The important thing even when you're building the house is the foundation. <laughs> so the foundation being was the foundation. You cannot just come with the entire house without a foundation. So we are saying that the person who really initiated it, it's, it's, a, it's a bingo. Would and the uh, DVP government, for instance, yes. um, uh, thank Joyce Banda for continuing with 
the uh, Bingu Wamutarika vision. She continued with it and have, have had this stadium built here. So she contributed to that vision as well. Wow, she contributed by just saying the, the press. I, I don't think that... And the work started during her time. Yes, the work started in that. But let me thank Professor Mutarika because he has done a lot. Because even if he, he started, there are so many things which were also were supposed to be done. I mean, the progress of the build. So yes, we thank she. She, she really started to building this. But uh, much, much of the work, and I would like to say here, Professor has done wonders. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, our president of today, Peter Mutarika, has done a lot of things. You know, there's still, there was a lot of things he was supposed to do lobby with the Chinese government. Okay, seeing how th where things are. You have seen the meetings which the president has made with the Chinese. So it was not really a joke. They can start building, but there are so many things which were supposed to be done and which the professor has done. I would like really to thank for the vision to continue the project which his brother started. Right. We're very proud of our president. Um, so we have had issues, uh, especially on theft of um, equipment here and, and all that. And that is some, somehow derailing progress here. Uh, how is government dealing with that? At the government, we have seen indeed there's a lot of theft here, especially. You know, these are most of what we've discovered are the people who are living around here. You know, the stadium is surrounded with the community here. And it's so sad to see the community themselves who are going to be nipped more from the stadium. Right. They're also trying to involve into theft. But at the government, we have taken serious measures to make sure that there's uh, enough security at the stadium. And we know that we've got several rooms in the stadium and we have already secured one room we want that the police station should be right out here. We need to have a police in charge with his staff right out here. Mm. So that room have already given them. They came to inspect. But there are some few things which they really want us to put in their offices as maybe a standby uh, whereby these thieves will be waiting, a standby room. And those are issues which we are going to really do it immediately because that will cost about three million mm. to demarcate and do whatever things they need in that room. So there will be serious security here. And anybody who is going to pray with anything here seriously is going to be taken into law and and talk to me um, especially about management of this stadium does Malawi have the capacity to take care of this huge expensive stadium the first in Malawi Yes, we looked on those issues, are very important. We and uh, our, some of our team officials visited Zambia. You know, Zambia, they have got the same stadium and the same company which constructed in Zambia, and they visited. Uh, currently, as a government, this is still under the government, under the management of the government. But there are plans, maybe in future, to see if we can go into PPPP, so that maybe find somebody who will be able to manage uh, the stadium. So currently, I would like to say that it's still the government managing the stadium. Right. Yes. And, and um, I, I know that you have uh, called for applications for people to rent out some uh, open stores and all that. Uh, how is that going and is that beneficial to, to the country? It is. I would like to say that there are so many people interested to do that. But uh, what I would like to say that there are only five rooms which are going to be. In fact, they're not rooms. It's just outside the stadium whereby somebody is supposed also to cover. They need to do the finishing themselves. There are a lot of, of, of writers, people who are very much interested. So I can see that... Uh, this stadium is going to generate its own fund mm -hmm. and apart from there we know that there will be international games here and uh, those who would like to have weddings like uh, Bangu has said he would like to be the first one to hold his wedding here <laughs> so there are those people and uh, there will be some fee we've got other conference rooms as well whereby people will be able to rent out so I can see this bringing money to the country right yes. right honorable minister thank, have you, a thank you Teresa so let's talk about football um, this is a sport that unifies a lot of people in the country yes. and unfortunately our team, the Flames, have not been doing really well. Um, what is the main problem, you think? I can say there are several problems, uh, Teresa. Of course, at first people are saying no finances and the like, but as a government, we have tried our best to make sure that uh, there is enough funds for, uh, for the Flames. I would like to say there are several areas, maybe issues of course, the coach himself sometimes maybe the decision which he makes and uh, maybe administratively. And the other thing I see, what is, I think there is also politics in football. So which is, those are some of a the A lot issues. of politics. There actually. is a lot of politics in that way. Those are the issues which are disturbing our team. And what I would like to say also, let me recommend the coach 
of course, he started very well trying to look at those uh, younger prayers, you know, looking at the grassroots level. And that's the plan of my ministry that we need to go down to the rural areas, go to look at those grassroots spots so that they should be able to boost our team. But um, issue like, um, you know, when he, there is Mr. Augustine Banda, who is learning the high performance center yeah. in Branta, yeah. you know, the ideas which is bringing that there are several issues we need to look at our prayers, issues of nutrition as well. What type of food are these uh, prayers eating? And uh, do they go through a physical examination? Or do they need to go through physical every time so that to see their, their feet? Mm -hmm. And those are several other things which we need to look at. And, and those are long-term kind of plans yes. uh, that government has in improving the team. But in the meantime, the crop of players that we have, how, how can we do better? That's why I think there are several issues we need to intensify, but identification of players. And maybe for our coaches, they need to make a proper decision to make sure these are the players who can pray. Those who are good players, they need to start with those ones. Sometimes it is the way they do, but what I'm saying that to me, I had a different suggestions, which I really suggested to, uh, to, to farm. I talked one time with the president of farm, or sports council, if it can be possible. My, my, I really liked it maybe as a nation, we should stop for some time, maybe two years, make a break for our team. We need really to build our team, like the way Botswana did, Zambia, they did the same thing. We build our team, the allocation from the government should still be the same allocation going so that this allocation will help to improve uh, the allowance of our prayers and maybe the type of food which they can eat and then intensify the training and also identifying other prayers. Within two years we build our team. Believe me, we've got wonderful prayers. And, and how did people receive that suggestion? Well, that one, uh, of course, with some they said, I don't think that's a good suggestion, but let's keep on uh, Let's keep on uh, praying. So I thought it's, there's a lot we need to do. Mm. I'll still come up to try to suggest because what I want is uh, listen to, to call for the meeting with FAM, Sports Council, you know, other people who have worked with Sports Council before and even former ministers of sports. So we meet together and we see how we can together, you know, those people who have got more ideas on how we can improve our team or work together. Mm -hmm. But I wish if we could agree in this, this would have been helped us, uh, Teresa and I. Because the goodness is I've seen the way our players bring technique. They, they have the techniques, but I don't know really what happens. For example, when I can see that game of Guinea and Malawi, they started very well, yeah. especially the first half. You know, but come second half, it was like, you know, we really wondered what has happened. Are these people training? Are they on training or the real camp? Mm -hmm. So there are issues that sometimes also I would like to have time with the players to see what is their main problem. Right. We might say that the coaches and maybe them also, they have got in, uh, inborn problems. So we can see at the, the country how we can assist them. Right. But uh, let me thank for the Malawi national team, the Queens, that they're taking Malawi uh, into the world. Right, we'll talk about uh, the, na the netball team. Yes. Uh, but let's, let's talk a little bit more about our national team. Yes. One of the football. issues, football, yes. Uh, one of the issues that has been uh, a huge challenge has been resources. Um, maybe sometimes they won't be, they won't have enough resources uh, when they go to camp or when they're traveling or even money to motivate them. Uh, if you win this game, the government will, is going to give you so much. Uh, we have not done that much um, as, as a, a government or as a country. But one controversial issue recently has been that, uh, for example, government had received, or farm had received uh, money from controversial prophet Shepard Bushiri. Yes. And government was quite criticized on why they seemed to be reluctant to receive that money. Would you want to talk to me about that? Yes, what was the problem? Um, in fact, it was not the government was reluctant. I would like to say that uh, it's the way the procedure was carried about this donation. Uh, what we know that it, we know farm has been receiving donations several times. And this donation, they don't even ask the ministry that we've got this donation. We know farm, they get money and we don't fall, they it's theirs. But it was a surprise that I have that message up today that on the, I can't remember this day, that was a Friday, when I got the message 9.30 a.m. in the morning, and this message was forwarded to me from my peers, uh, that message came from uh, the president of farm saying that uh, he has received a call from Prophet Bishuri that he is coming today. Today means that Friday, 1.30. And that's the time I saw the message, is 9.38. 
but he's coming at 1.30 to donate the money for the 4 million to frame. And the message said that we need your guidance. It was quite tough for us, uh, Teresa and uh, Teresa, to say, now they need guidance for us and this man is already there. It means they have already accepted them, he's already in the country. But why did FAM uh, require guidance from you? You just said that they receive a lot of uh, donations from yes. other companies or individuals. Why would they seek guidance when that's, it's from the Prophet? That's where the, our question was, you know, and that's where, where people they didn't understand us and where they say that the government just criticizing. But we asked, we were asked for guidance. And as the government and the ministry, through Sports Council, we gave them the guidance, the same, because we know this was just something few minutes to communicate. And we gave them the guidance, the way they are supposed, FAM was supposed to write Sports Council about the donation. Sports Council was supposed to write the ministry that were getting this, this donation. But why did, that, why did they have to write when sometimes, for example, Kazbek uh -huh. or Airtel had donated towards the same cause um, and uh, did they have to write the ministry for those donations why when it's coming from Bushiri? One the first thing is they ask for guidance and we're giving guidance. Secondly you talk about Kazbek. Kazbek is a long-term partner okay why Bushiri is a once 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 in a while donation someone just donates once you know it's just a donation which we get other donation from other countries you talk about Airtel Malawi go to about TNM talk about Kasbe those are long term partners and they are MOUs which has been signed with the government so that's not a problem at all but someone who comes at once so and they wanted the guidance so according to the government policy we gave the proper guidance and that's the way so if sports council or the ministry and the ministry were not supposed to receive money there is a mistake of finance so we were supposed also to write to the Minister of Finance so but that is a long yeah. process it's one day in the trees and Danga. what we did for us to be asked for guidance 9 30 by 10 o'clock we would we had already sent this uh, the guidance and by the way if they knew the dates they were supposed to inform us before Teresa, if the prophet was blessing us with money him also he was supposed to receive the blessing from the government so it's a uh, two way now, if we are all together there, the Minister of Finance there, I'm the Minister and all other officials, we receive immediately the check is being handed out to farm. And that would be the norm. Because the main thing we are arguing was issues of uh, accountability. Mm -hmm. The Minister of Finance and the Minister were supposed to account for that money. So if we don't know, how are we going to follow up what the money has done? So it's quite difficult. So people, they really put brains on us. Uh, other, they ask, can the Minister resign because of this? I said, no, no, let's follow our policies. We were asked for guidance, we gave the proper guidance, we didn't stop anyone to get the money, but we gave the, the guidance. So is, is, firm, is, is firm in trouble for accepting that money uh, when they didn't follow that procedure? Not really trouble, but the issue is they are supposed to follow the, the, the procedure. Yeah, I can't say much about that, but what we're saying, we're disappointed indeed as a government, very much disappointed. It's like um, they are putting us as if we've got personal, you know, uh, attacks with the profit, which is not the case. But them, they know. Yeah, especially coming at a time when uh, there have been these rumors that maybe he might be vying for the hot seat, the president's seat, uh, and might contest as well. So maybe government is trying to gag and, and ensure that Bushiri doesn't have all these platforms. I wouldn't have uh, comment anything about that, which I haven't heard so far. But what we are saying that for him to follow the proper guidance, whether he's vying for presidency and the like. And the government, we cannot fear anybody who is running for government. In fact, it's the people who are elect the president. And so far, as, as we know, anyone is open to anyone. We cannot block anybody for not contesting. But that's not our fear. And, and we, we, we don't fear about that all. And I didn't know, I don't know anything about that. But all what I know that is he was misguided. But surprising enough, Around one o'clock, Bushiri himself called me at the office. Honorable Minister, can you tell us? I told him the right Honorable Prophet. I'm sorry, Prophet. It's like this, but we are, we've just been told today. But we are supposed to follow the proper channel. And for us, we wanted just to account for the money. Mm -hmm. You know what Bushiri said? Mm -hmm. He said, my wife has even asked me that question, Honorable Minister. He said, how are we going to know that these people are going to count for money? I said, you see now, you might think that the government, we are blocking you, or maybe we hate you, That's not, but we want things to be, they should be transparent. Talking about transparency and accountability, yes, Honorable Minister, um, there, have been, there have been issues uh, on 
get collections, money being stolen and all that. I know there's been a new system that has been put in place. But uh, for that's just a recent game. Uh, for example, someone found uh, a, a way around that and they had, for example, duplicates for tickets. And uh, one ticket would make a lot of more money or people would have one, one ticket with the same serial number, but several people would have it. How are you going to still ensure that there is transparency in uh, football and ensure that funds indeed are being used for the right purpose? Uh, indeed, Teresa, that has been a great problem, especially on issues of uh, 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 funds collection. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, people are duplicating tickets. Sometimes even the money itself, you know, people, they don't give the whole money. Sometimes, like last time we had, uh, it was in Kamu Stadium where they made 28 a million. It came up to 16 million, which is really sad. We know this is a very big problem as a government. Uh, but as a government, we have put it as one of our reform areas, uh, issues of e-ticketing. So I would like to say that we have got plans so that we should be able to install electronic ticketing in all our stadiums. Well, the first stadium will be the Bingo Stadium and then the Camel Stadium as well, so that we should be able to uh, overcome such challenges which we are facing. It's really sad for, for, for the nation that people are getting advantage out of this, but we know that this money could even help the players themselves, even the administrators and the supporters themselves, because the government gets only 25%, but the rest of the money goes to them. So it's, it's quite sad for this. But at the moment, we are working on the e-ticketing, because that is one of our form area and then we thought it is that should be the way how we can improve a collection of the fans in our stadiums right. yes uh, we're running out of time but I would want to, to talk to you about netball yes. and uh, it's one sport that has put us on the map how, how is government supporting netball and ensuring that that legacy uh, that talent continues is sustainable uh, as a government um, um, Teresa we know that uh, sports especially netball the Queens uh, it's one of uh, a wonderful team which have taken Malawi to the world and the government would like to say that we are going to support this team. We know now we, are, we have got plans so that we should be able to construct the indoor sports complex. That's a major challenge that we cannot host even international game in the country because we don't have indoor sports games. The plans were here also that we should be able to construct. We have a place behind this stadium. Right, outside yes, outside there, there, where we are going to construct the indoor sports complex. So as the gov government, we are committed. I'm happy that even the patron herself, the first lady, Dr. Gertrude Mtarika, she has got very much interest to make sure that we, are, we have built this indoor sports complex. So we are trying to source funds now. We have already started in order we should continue to support our girls. But others, I would like to say that we are there for them and the government will always have support for our team. Yeah, one concern has been that um, there are no gate collections uh, for watching netball. And netball is one of the sports that is really uh, Malawi is well known for. Uh, is there going to be a time when we're going to w go and watch netball and then we're going to pay? Yes, yes, Teresa. That, that time is there. And we have seen that the recent competition with you had, whereby indeed they have lost a lot of money where they should be able to get something. But now, from now on, we are having a meeting very soon. That's a meeting I told about the farm, NAM, all the sports are. Uh, sports uh, officers so that we see how we can go about it. Indeed from now we want to start on that people should be able to pay for netball. I don't know it's because uh, netball is for women and women have got that motherly love mm -hmm. and then it, we didn't consider about this but at the end of the day their prayers were suffering. Very soon I think we'll start paying for netball as well. In fact it's not only netball but there are so many sports disciplines which we would like to revamp now because most other sports disciplines are very idle. And this is something which I'll be meeting next of next week. I'm meeting all the uh, president of the association to see what has made these other sports disciplines to be idle. But what I can say that each and every sports discipline now, people should be able to pay so that we get something to, for continuity and sustainability of our, our, our teams. Honorable Grace Yumi, thank you so much for having time to talk to us. Thank and you, Teresa. Uh, congratulations for being reappointed. Thank you very much. I really thank and let me thank the president uh, for really having confidence on me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.